I've never seen so much misinformation in the industry as there is currently dealing with rack and pinion drive systems. We have lots of engineering here at Shop Saber CNC and we use rack and pinions in some applications and so we know a whole lot about it. So I really wanted to stop and unpack that so that you can understand what's really going on here. Now here's how they work. There's a rack that bolts onto the side frame of the machine and there's a pinion that meshes with that. And when that pinion turns, then the machine moves. Well, first off, it can't fit perfectly tight or it locks up. So you really have to have from three to five thousandths of play in there on both ends. And that's called backlash. And we have a real problem getting rid of that. Now, there's really, on the, when you get to the under $60,000 CNC machines, the technology choices are going to be straight racks and helical racks. Now, the helical racks are a little bit quieter you can probably use a smaller one because you have a larger contact area, but there's a huge trade-off for that. It creates side forces that cause wear and tear on associated components. So long-term, you're gonna have a lot more maintenance on things like planetary drives because of that. there's no way around it. All right? There's another problem, and that is if you think about how you use a CNC router, for instance, or, or CNC plasma machine. You know, you may have a four by eight table, but you do a lot of machining on the front end if you're making smaller parts, you're not making cabinet nests and stuff like that. Well, the actual racks are fairly soft and they tend to wear out. So those wear on the front and they don't wear on the back. Well, guess what? You gotta replace it all to replace it. And that's something people don't think a lot about when they're dealing with rack and pinions. We have ways to deal with variability, even in precision components. You know, anything you manufacture, even if it's a precision drive system, there's some variation. We can compensate for that in the machine control itself. Once we teach the machine control what the variability is, then it compensates for it and, and it adjusts the part. That works fine till you get to backlash, and we don't really have an effective way at this level to do that. So you're gonna have to live with it, all right? Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that somewhere on your table, you may have a, some play show up, and it may not matter. On some parts, it doesn't. When you're doing precision stuff, it might. MDF doors are that way, plastic's that way, aluminum's that way. So you may have a defect show up somewhere on the table because of that. Well, here's how we deal with a shop saver CNC. We don't use that technology on our machine to grade routers. But there are machines we can use it on. For instance, think about a plasma machine. The torch has so much variability, a little bump here or there doesn't really matter. Or if it's a really low-end price machine and, and we just can't afford to put a more expensive drive system, we would use it for that. An argument I hear a lot from our competitors is that, oh, some of these much more expensive machines use rack and pinion, that's good enough for them. Well, they're either being willfully disingenuous or they don't know any better, and I hope the latter is true, but they're comparing apples to oranges. Because what happens is, when let's say, let's say I'm making an aerospace mill that's got a long travel, and that travel's longer than supported by a ball screw, so I can't get a ball screw that long. I don't have any choice. Now, there's a whole different type of rack and pinion systems that I can use for that. Well, here's what happens. Number one, those are large racks, they're helical, and they're specially precision ground, number one, so that makes them a little more accurate. I do some different things with the pinions to take some of the backlash out. And then I put a really expensive machine control that can compensate for that backlash. But it's not practical to put a $50,000 machine control on a $60,000 CNC router. It just doesn't work. But that's how they get around that. And so they're really not comparing apples to apples. They're comparing apples to oranges. And I really think they don't know any better. Well, I hope this clears up any misunderstanding you might have about rack and pinion drive systems. You know, at Shop Saber CNC, we do all our engineering in-house and we have lots of talent and we can basically do anything. You've got to remember when, when you design a machine to a for certain price point, you know, you have to figure out what's the best drive technology for the value for the customer, for the accuracy that they need. And we've done a very, very good job of it. And I think you'll find that's why shop savers perform better than anybody in our class in the industry. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you need more information, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.